talking about some crackpot theories for City of Heavenly Fire. So I spent pretty much all of yesterday just obsessing over Cassandra Clare's books, and I've come up with some theories that I want to share with you about what I think is gonna go down in this final installment in the Mortal Instruments series. If you couldn't already guess, let me just issue a warning that this video is going to be very, very spoilery for all of Cassandra Clare's previous books. If you have not read all of these books, then you should not watch this video. And also, you should read these books. Also, since I am going to be discussing theories and predictions and whatnot, if you would prefer to not even be potentially spoiled for book six, then you shouldn't watch this video because some of my predictions could be right, and some could be ridiculously wrong, but we'll just have to wait one more week and see. Okay? Okay? We good? Let's start this. First theory. Who's gonna die? Cassandra Clare has said that six characters we know by name will die. So my first prediction is a pretty obvious one. I think Sebastian is gonna die. Like, he needs to die. The series needs his death at the conclusion of it. If Sebastian doesn't die, I don't even know what that would mean for these books. So, Sebastian, he has to die. Next up on my death list is Raphael. I think he's another one that just has to die. Like, he wants to kill Simon. Simon doesn't have the mark to protect him anymore. So, Raphael is gonna be trying to kill Simon as soon as he finds that out. Simon can't die, because history has proven that Simon Lewis does not die. So, Raphael, he gonna die. Also, tangent to this Raphael thing, I do not for one second believe that Maureen killed Camille. Like, that is just all kinds of absurd to my brain. So, I think Camille is still alive. I think maybe Camille is gonna kill Raphael. Or, Simon is gonna kill Raphael, because Raphael's gonna try to kill him. So yeah, Raphael, definitely gonna die. The kind of death that he's not going to rise again from. Then I'm thinking that Jordan and possibly also Maya are gonna die. We can't have only bad guys dying. Like, we have to experience some loss on the side of Team Good. And as far as our core little gang goes, losing Jordan and Maya would be the, the least heartbreaking, I think. Then I'm thinking that Magnus Bane is going to die. But, 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 before you freak out, let me tell you how I think he's going to die. Because I think Magnus Bane is going to die of old age at the very end of the epilogue. Magnus Bane has been alive for a very long time. He's like 800 years old. So, maybe, I'm thinking, him and Alec will reconcile, Magnus will give up his immortality, and die of old age with Alec at the end of the epilogue. Plausible? Plausible! I think so. And for the final one or two named character deaths here, I really think it's gonna be parents. Jocelyn, or Luke, or Maurice, or Robert, or even Emma Carstairs parents. I don't know if they count as characters we know by name, because I don't actually know their names. I, I know they're in the book somewhere, I could look it up really easily, but Emma Carstairs parents, we know they die in City of Heavenly Fire. Now aside from the six characters you know by name, we'll die thing. There's been some other clues that we've gotten from Cassandra Clare. One of them is that there's a death of a major character early on in the book, and I think this is gonna be one of the parents, because that will, like, spark some of the plot and also get us to the Shadowhunter funeral. Or, or, this could be where Jordan and or Maya dies. We've gotten some other clues that I think would support this, like Jordan and Maya witness a massacre, and someone dies protecting someone else, and a couple is separated 
permanently by the end of the book and a boyfriend dies so I'm thinking that Jordan and Maya witness a massacre and then they're like discovered and Jordan sacrifices himself to save Maya and she lives on and Jordan is deadsies and they're separated and yeah I think I think that's what might happen. Next theory is about the Clockwork Princess epilogue. We already know that epilogue takes place during City of Heavenly Fire. So the real question is when during City of Heavenly Fire is that going to go down? Early on, in the middle, at the very end, I'm thinking and hoping that it happens early on, like at least in the first half of the book. There's this theory that the heavenly fire inside of Jace might be able to burn the demon drug addiction out of Jem. And I feel like this process has already started, because in the epilogue of City of Lost Souls, Jace has all the heavenly fire inside of him, and he mentions that he touched brother Zachariah and felt some of the heavenly fire go into him. So so maybe, maybe, that heavenly fire is already doing its thing and making Jem, Jem again. I mean, he's still a silent brother, so I don't know exactly how that is gonna get reversed, but I feel like the process has started. I'm starting to realize that this video is less about predictions and more about what I want to happen. But anyways, but anyways. if. The Clockwork Princess epilogue takes place in the beginning of City of Heavenly Fire, then that would just be perfect. Like, then we have Jem back early on, and he can go get Tessa back and pull her into our little gang of Team Good, and then Team Good can just kick Sebastian's ass, and everything will be happily ever after, except for all the people who died. But one of them was Sebastian, so good riddance. We have real Jem back, and he can help Jace, because he loves Jace, because Jace is the last Harrendale, except, oh my god, no he's not. Cassandra Clare teased that Jace wasn't necessarily the end of the Harrendale line. So, 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 who else is a Harrendale? I need to know, I like the Harrendale boys, so. If there's another one, I would like him to be on my radar. I feel like I saw somewhere on Twitter or Tumblr or something that Stephen Harrendale was not actually dead. That he had like faked his death or something and went on to father more children. Scandal! Okay, speaking of scandal, let's, let's move right along into my next so a few weeks ago, I was reading City of Lost Souls, and I came across this passage where Isabel is thinking about how both of her parents have blue eyes, and somehow she ended up with these dark brown black eyes. And I start freaking out a little bit, because I'm not a scientist. Surprise! I'm not a scientist, and admittedly, my knowledge of genetics is pretty limited, but, but, I have always been under the impression that that sort of thing could not happen. Two parents with blue eyes cannot have a child with dark eyes. And like, maybe it's not genetically impossible, but it is extremely unlikely. So I start freaking out a little bit, and I vox Christine of Poland Bananas Books, and I ask her, like, hey, hey, what, what's up with this? Is this a scandal of ruin? And she agrees that it's probably a scandal. So we start theorizing all of the possibilities to explain this. At first we were thinking, you know, we know Robert Lightwood is a cheater and had an affair. So maybe, maybe Isabel is not Maurice's daughter. She is Robert's love child with that other woman. But no, that can't be it because Izzy is described as looking like Maurice so often. Like Maurice and Izzy resemble each other so closely, Izzy has to be Maurice's daughter. But then, but then, we come up with this new angle to the theory. Izzy has black eyes, so. Who else has black eyes? And was also totally adored by Izzy's mother, and also probably wanted more babies to experiment on. Valentine. Valentine. Valentine! What if, what if Izzy's birth father 
was Valentine. Isabel is potentially Clary and Sebastian's half sister. And she may or may not have been experimented on, possibly with vampire blood, so she could live five ever with Simon. That is one theory. And Christine actually just put up a full video dedicated entirely to this Isabel theory. So I'll link that in the description and I really encourage you to check it out because it's very detailed. Like, Christine and I spent hours hashing this out and we think our theory is pretty solid. So go check that out. The link is in the description. But yeah! that is gonna be it for this video today. Those are my theories and predictions and mostly just what I hope is gonna happen in City of Heavenly Fire. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my theories or maybe you have your own that you would like to share. I would love to hear them. I'm kind of obsessed with theories for this book right now. Like, that's the whole reason I'm doing this video. I've never done a Crackpot Theories video before until now, when I'm, like, obsessed with theories for this book. So if you have any, hit me with them. But yeah, that's it. That's everything. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great night, and I will have another vlog up soon, so I will see you then. Goodbye! Also, since I am going to be interrupted by a plane. Let's just dance until it's done being a plane. Okay, I think it's done. That was enough dancing anyways. That, that is what I want. That, that is what I really, really want. Tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want the Clockwork Princess epilogue to happen early, early on. Goodbye! That was weird. Do it again.